Hey guys, Stephen from LOJ Conversions here with the first modification video for our Project FX. It's hashtag Silver Bullet FX on social media. It's a LY6, a 6 liter iron block Gen 4 swapped um, Infinity FX SUV. It's got a 6L90 trans in it and a LSA supercharger that's been fully ported by Faster Proms and a Brian Tooley Stage 3 blower can. That's all that's done to the truck right now. Um, on that setup, on straight pump gas, 93 octane, the truck made 620 wheel horsepower. And today we are installing a snow performance methanol injection kit and a MSD voltage booster for the fuel pump to get a little bit more sealing out of our fuel system. All right, guys, commence voiceover mode. We got a long video today covering the installation of our Snow Performance Stage 2 Methanol Injection Kit and an MSD Fuel Pump Voltage Booster. Now, this entire day's worth of work was all going on simultaneously. Myself, Ron, and Jay were all working on this vehicle at the same time, so the video is not actually going to go in chronological order. I'm going to break it up into what happened in um, each section of the vehicle, so basically looking at the things in the engine bay, then some of the things in the trunk, things inside the car, break it up that way. So there might be some footage that looks like, hey, earlier in the video that part was installed, but now I can see in the background it's not anymore. And that's because I'm trying to break it up in a way that's easier to watch rather than in chronological order and just having the video jump around from one part of the car to the other. So first things first, we're covering the work that was done in the engine bay, and what I decided to do myself was the installation of the throttle injection plate between the throttle body and the supercharger snout. And this was a little bit of a learning experience because the nozzles and nozzle holders that come in the standard kit um, aren't actually compatible with the injection plate. Well, the nozzles are, but the nozzle holders aren't. And they require this straight through nozzle holder rather than the L-shaped 90 degree block style nozzle holder that comes in the base kit. And the throttle injection plate only came with one of these holders, not two, but we were configuring the kit for two nozzles. So what I ended up having to do is uh, be a little creative and because we were using a fuel shutoff solenoid, we didn't need the check valve that came in the base kit. But the check valve is essentially the same shape as one of the straight nozzle holders for the injection plate. It was just longer and it had a valve inside. So what I decided to do was take the lathe and actually part off the back side of the check valve right behind the hex on it. And that way the check valve itself would fall out of the check valve holder and I would be able to tap the one end to 1 8 NPT and would basically be exactly the same as one of the straight through nozzle holders. This helped keep us on schedule rather than having to order another part and wait for that part to come in. So what I'm doing here is setting up the lathe with a part off tool and that check valve is chucked up in the lathe chuck and basically just coming in with this parting off tool and cutting off the back side of that check valve right behind the hex that's on it. And once that piece was parted off, basically the spring and the check valve ball itself just fell out of the check valve body. And then I just basically pull the part out, take a look at it. Yeah, this is probably something that's gonna work for what we wanna do. And now I've gotta drill and tap the inside to 1 8 MPT. So I look at my drill chart, figure out the size drill bit that I need, go and grab the 1 8 MPT tap and get the drill bit put into the lathe. And then I can kick the lathe back on and basically drill down inside the part just enough to run the tap in far enough to get the amount of threads that we need in order to connect this and use it as a nozzle holder. So here I'm plunging in with the drill bit. It's always interesting drilling on a lathe because the part is turning and the bit is staying still. It kind of looks cool. I've always been fascinated by it. The lathe is one of my favorite tools in the shop. But once I get that drilled in, take some aluminum cutting fluid on my tap and I basically lock the chuck up in the lathe and can run the tap in and out to tap the hole. Then again, pull the part back out, inspect it a little bit, get some compressed air, blow out any metal chips so that we don't clog up our nozzle once we install the nozzle in there. And then I can put that part right in the throttle plate and it perfect works just like one of the nozzle holders that would have come with the nozzle plate in the first place using uh, Snow Performance's special sealing compound on the threads to make sure it doesn't leak, and then we're good to go. Now, while I was working on that nozzle setup for the injection plate, Ron was actually working on extending the throttle body actuator wires on the wiring harness. The way this motor was originally set up, the throttle body motor was on the outside of the supercharger snout facing towards the strut tower, but the way the injection plate is set up, it can't 
basically point the nozzles in the same direction as the throttle motor, they interfere. So what we had to do is flip the throttle body to allow the nozzles to point towards the strut tower, because if the nozzles tried to point the opposite way, they would be aimed right at the supercharger pulley and it wouldn't work. So Ron was tasked with figuring out the wiring while I was working on getting the nozzles set up. So here we're stepping back in time a little bit to see what Ron was working on while I was messing with the nozzles, and basically Ron was getting those wires extended, and while he did that, I was starting to work on figuring out how we're going to get this T-fitting in to split the single hose coming from the methanol injection pump into the two nozzles that are in the nozzle plate. So then I was using, again, more of this uh, special sealant on these threads and getting some straight fittings installed into the nozzle holders and then getting those tightened up. And then I needed to figure out, okay, how are we going to get this T-fitting set up for the twin injection kit? So the first thing I did was install a piece of hose into each nozzle. That way I can basically see how the hose would point coming out of the nozzles and figure out how flexible the hose is, what the bend radius is, to see how far away from the nozzle plate the T-fitting itself had to be. So I've got one piece of hose installed into one nozzle, another piece of hose installed in the other nozzle, and then you can see I'm bending the hose here to figure out how close can I get this T-fitting to the nozzles. Do I want the two uh, hoses to each go into a branch and have the um, feed line coming into the run of the T, or do I want to configure it the other way with the feed coming into one branch and the run going off to the other nozzle? That's the way I elected to go. It looked a little cleaner. So uh, then I've got the hoses cut to length now, taking the nuts off of the T-fitting and sliding them over each piece of hose, and then it's getting the T-fitting installed into the nozzle plate so that the nozzle plate itself is ready to be installed onto the truck. You can see here I've got one side connected and then I left enough hose, just enough that the bend radius works properly, we're not kinking that injection hose, and then I get that configured as well. Tighten up the fittings and we're good to go, ready to get this plate installed onto the truck. But now I've got to see how Ron's doing with getting his wiring extended um, so that we can flip that throttle body over. So now it's back over to the truck, interrupt Ron and what he's doing. He's got the throttle body bolted on, flipped over, so he can figure out his wire lengths. But hey, Ron, stop what you're doing. I've got to install this nozzle plate so I can see how it's going to fit and how we're going to route the hose into the nozzle. So Ron's pulling the throttle body back off of the intake, and then we're going to get this uh, injection plate installed now that it's ready. And the nice thing is, you know, with two people, it's pretty easy to hold the plate in place and then just have Ron come in with the throttle body. The kit was really nice. It came with extended bolts, the correct length to fit through the nozzle plate and get it all bolted together. And then we get the nozzle plate installed and figure out the way the hose is coming off of the nozzles, where it's pointing. Is it going to be clear of everything else and how we can route the hose that's actually going to feed those nozzles. Once that injection plate was installed, Ron could get back to working on extending the wiring, which is a bit of a tedious process, and it was super frustrating because in reality, we really only needed to extend this wiring harness about two or three inches. And the funny thing is, when we first built the truck, we shortened the harness when we flipped the throttle body the other way in the first place. So if I had some foresight, we wouldn't have had to do that, but once it was done, we got some lube on there, wrapped it in electrical tape, and got the harness reinstalled. We routed it over top of the snout rather than underneath to keep it away from the belts. And there is a boss on the top of the snout that is in the perfect location for uh, basically putting a cushion clamp to hold that harness securely in place so it doesn't move around or accidentally get rubbed by a belt or anything like that. And then we're able to get our intake kit reinstalled, put all the hose couplers back on, the uh, silicone couplers and the hose clamps, get that all bolted back down. And you can see Ron's working on getting that cushion clamp installed. So now we're jumping from methanol injection to a fuel pump voltage booster. And there's a lot more involved in the meth injection, but we'll get back to that in a little bit. Here I'm getting the MSD kit out of the box, taking a look at the actual injection box itself, the wiring harness, figuring out, hey, where do I want to mount this thing? What does it need? The wiring is super simple. We're talking about a power and a ground direct to the battery, then the power wire that would normally turn on the factory fuel pump actually goes to trigger the box and then the box has an output wire back to the fuel pump which is the variable voltage output. 
we decided to install the box right here inside uh, the space behind the driver's side strut tower near the clutch or near the brake master cylinder. Uh, it hides it out of the way in the engine bay so you don't actually see it and it worked out really well. I was able to drill and put some sheet metal screws in to hold it in place. The only thing I needed to do was basically permanently install the USB cable onto it because you wouldn't be able to access the port uh, once the box was installed, but basically just coiled up the wire, stuck it down in the strut tower hole, and then whenever I need to program the box, I can do that. Here, I'm installing the vacuum lines for the boost reference. It's just a T-fitting going right into the hose that was already run into the truck for the boost gauge that was installed before. And I'm using some hairspray on the hose as I'm putting it over this T-fitting. The hairspray is great because it acts as a lubricant when you're sliding it together, but then when it dries, it's actually an adhesive that holds the lines together. So you don't worry about your lines blowing apart under boost, which is a pretty big deal when you're talking about fuel pump voltage and the methanol injection controller both being on this vacuum line. If that was to blow off, you would stop boosting voltage to your fuel pump and you would stop injecting methanol, you would go super lean and probably blow up the motor immediately. But here we're getting the trim pieces back on. You can see the piece is tucked in there real nice. And now it's time to figure out how to get the wiring harness from one side of the engine bay to the other. So we needed to run some wires down under the vehicle to get to the back to where the fuel pump is. And then we also needed to run some wires across from the battery side of the engine bay to where I mounted the fuel pump voltage booster. For the wires running under the truck, we basically ran the harness right along where the fuel lines run um, right up to the engine bay. Basically, the wires need to go from and to the same place. They need to go from the fuel sending unit under the vehicle up to where they come up next to the battery. Same thing with the fuel lines. So it was logical to run them together. It was a little tricky getting the wires to fish up next to the saddle tank to get up to the fuel sending unit, but once we did, we were able to use some zip ties and zip tie the harness in place to hold it in place under the vehicle securely so we didn't have to worry about it getting caught on anything. It was covered in a nice loom right from MSD, which was super nice. And then it was just a matter of cutting some wires at the fuel sending unit and using some butt splices, again heat shrinkable, so that we can make secure connections at the fuel sending unit in order to send power from the original fuel pump voltage wire up to the voltage booster to turn the booster on, and then from the booster back to the fuel pump so we can send that voltage regulated signal back to the fuel pump to overdrive the pump and get more flow rate out of this in single in-tank fuel pump for this fuel system. I prefer these heat shrinkable butt splice connectors for these type of connections because the crimp itself is a very secure connection and then when they have these adhesive lined heat shrinkable liners on the outside, when those shrink down it essentially glues the outer covering of the wires together and it really makes a super secure connection. And then once you've got everything crimped together, you can wrap your wires in some electrical tape, some loom, uh, tidy it up as best you can. You don't want wires loose and rubbing around or vibrating because that's how you get problems. And then it's just a matter of putting the cover back over the fuel sending unit. Um, this is right under the rear seat in this vehicle, just like it is in a G35 or a 350Z. And then essentially you're done. The wiring came up under the vehicle under that hat in the first place, and that's about it. And then we go up to the front of the vehicle, and I've got the laptop hooked up to the fuel pump voltage booster. Super easy to set up. You can go up to four independent set points. And at those four set points, basically you can pick four different either va manifold vacuum levels or boost levels and set the corresponding pump output voltage for those levels. Here I've got it configured for 14.5 volts off boost and 22 volts on boost. And that's what we went off with initially. I'm sure it will get changed at the dyno. Now we're going to step back in time again to see the work that Jay was doing on this methanol reservoir and getting it set up and installed into the back of the vehicle while Ron and I were working under the hood on the throttle injection plate and the throttle body wiring. At first Jay is getting the low fluid level sensor installed into the reservoir. This is actually an optional part but I highly recommend it especially when you're going to be using the methanol not just as a boost cooler but as a supplemental fuel source like we are because that way if the meth methanol runs low, you don't run risk of accidentally getting on throttle on boost without knowing it and doing damage to the motor from a lean condition. And then Jay's been working in the hatch this whole time and we decided to install the methanol reservoir on the driver's side of the hatch. It was the most logical layout. We could install the injection pump itself right onto the floor of the hatch. You can see Jay's got it there and he's basically just using some sheet metal screws, drill, and other tools for mounting the methanol pump 
and the fuel cutoff solenoid. And then it's getting the vehicle moved up and figuring out how to fish this line from the back all the way to the front. Now, on an independent suspension vehicle, that can be tricky because you've got the whole rear suspension to get over, under, and through. And then you got to get all the way up from the back of the vehicle to the front and manage to stay away from the exhaust system and any other really hot parts because this is just nylon tubing. Now, when we were done, we ended up actually wrapping the entire sleeve in either abrasion-resistant sleeving or high-heat-resistant sleeving, depending where it was under the vehicle. But that's what we ended up doing, running that across. And then I came back to help Jay fabricate some brackets for actually mounting the reservoir. So then I moved the reservoir, basically used these um, push-to-connect fittings. They're actually pretty easy to take apart, get disconnected, get the reservoir pushed out of the way, and figure out how are we going to make a mounting bracket here. I know that's where we want the reservoir, but we got to figure out a way to secure it in place. There's some structure under the carpet here that we can bolt into, but it's not really a nice flat surface. we got to figure something else out. So I went and got the uh, ruler here to take some measurements, and I knew I had some um, just one inch wide steel strip that I could use to make a bracket. So once I got some measurements taken in place, this is kind of on the spot fabricating, but transfer those measurements to this piece of steel plate. Uh, both bend points and cut points, and mark out where I want my bends at, mark out where I want to make a cut at, and then take this piece of metal, uh, use the cutoff circular saw, which is an awesome tool once the blade is new, when it wears out, it's not as much fun, but then use the flap disc and uh, smooth out the edges, and then I'm going to take this piece of metal and I'm going to put it in the vise and use a adjustable wrench to help get the bend started. And then once I got the bend started and the piece pulled down a bit, I can just use a sledgehammer to get it bent down to the angle that I think I'm going to need to make this work. Then get it pulled out of the vise, turn it around so I can make the second bend, make sure it's squarely situated in the vise, use the adjustable wrench again to get the bend started, then back to the sledgehammer to get it bent the rest of the way. And then once I've got it in the uh, uh, orientation that I think it's going to need, pull it back out of the vise, go back to the back of the vehicle, and do a test fit in the trunk. And you can see it's not a perfect 90 degree bend here. It couldn't be because it needed to get around the injection pump. But basically I got pretty lucky and on the first shot it fit pretty much perfect. So then it was back to the vise to drill some holes into this piece of metal for both mounting the tank to the bracket and mounting the bracket to the car. So once the bracket was in place, I used some sheet metal screws to hold it in and then sat the tank on top, took a look at my work and uh, got the bottom mounting screw into the sheet metal of the car installed as well. And then it was a matter of figuring out, okay, that's one bracket for the front. What am I going to do for the rear? So I used the remnants of the metal that was left, took a measurement and marked the uh, piece of steel for cutting it to length and basically just making one uh, strap here for that side. Again, cut off wheel this time, but mark the piece for where I'm going to bolt it or screw it into the uh, plastics of the trunk. Fortunately, it's pretty thick plastic. It should be pretty plenty strong between the metal to metal connections and plastic to metal connections to hold this tank in place. Uh, drilling some mounting holes here. Good drill bits are a pleasure to work with. And then get that piece of steel installed into the trunk area using some low profile Phillips head screws and basically zip, 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 zip and getting four screws into this thing to hold those two straps in place in addition to where they're actually screwed into the metal of the vehicle as well. And once they're uh, screwed in place, set the tank back on top and then I can figure out, okay, we've got the rear strap, let's get the back strap installed. And then once that's done, you can get the front strap installed and that's everything you need to hold this two and a half gallon reservoir in place in the trunk of this vehicle. And once it was bolted back in place, securely fastened, I was able to take the uh, push to connect fitting on this nylon hose and just get that reconnected to the pump. And pretty much the rear trunk mount set up for that reservoir was done. Then it was time to pour in some methanol and get that uh, leak checked. Everything was good to go. And the last thing we're going to cover here is the installation of the methanol injection controller itself, which is actually all contained in a 2 and 1 16th inch gauge. It's really nice. It installs right in the gauge pod. It actually functions as a boost gauge, and you can do all your programming of the methanol injection settings right from the comfort of sitting in the seat inside the vehicle. No knobs to mess with, just a couple simple buttons, and a nice colorful display where you can actually configure the colors however you want. Now the trickiest part was actually finding a 12 volt switched ignition source to power the thing 
that was on a 15 amp circuit because the methanol pump itself draws 11 amps. Fortunately, just refer to the factory service manuals, find the source that you want to use, and you're good to go. And I didn't have to install any more relays into the vehicle to power this. I was able to use existing wiring, and it's worked perfectly. Here, I'm basically doing the initial setup on the gauge itself. You can configure the colors of the display, and it was really nice. There was actually color settings to choose from that matched the interior perfectly. I was also able to set the initial settings for when the methanol would come on, um, the initial boost pressure that it would start to inject at, and then the boost pressure in which it would be full flow at. Initially, I set it up for two pounds to start injecting, 10 pounds full flow. I'm sure that Jeremy is gonna wanna tweak that once we get this thing on the dyno, but it's what I set it up to at first. You can basically arm the entire system, turn it on and off, enable it, disable it. And there's a prime feature as well to prime the system. So what we did is we got the hose run up to the front, got a little plastic container and hit the prime button inside the vehicle. You can see that the methanol is flowing out of the hose, purged all the air out of the system. And then to leak check the system, I actually elected to take one of the nozzles, the smaller ones that came in the base kit, not the full flow ones that we're using, put it in one of the nozzle holders that didn't work with the injection plate and basically make a makeshift nozzle setup with one of these push to connect fittings. And that way I could put it right onto the end of the hose in the engine bay. And by putting a nozzle on there, it puts back pressure on the whole system when we were able to check all of the fittings between that nozzle and the back of the engine bay for any leaks. And you know, we purged it a couple times, the spray pattern looked great, it was flowing great, then we were good to go. Again, it's just a simple one button push for purge, runs the pump for a couple seconds, turns it off, and you know that you're good to go. Once that was done, the install was essentially complete. It was just a matter of installing some cushion clamps or zip ties to hold the hoses away from any potential heat sources or vibration damage, and then stand back, take a look at all of the work that we got accomplished in one day. It was quite a bit of work, but it was nice to be able to sit back and look at the finished product. Hey guys, we just wrapped up the first day of doing a bunch of mods on this FX. The upgrades we did today were a Snow Performance Stage 2 um, boost cooler. The other upgrade we did was an MSD fuel pump voltage booster. A couple upgrades we still have left to do. We still have to install our overdrive crank pulley. It's a 10% overdrive pulley. And we've also got to install an FTI high stall torque converter. Uh, right now, this truck has a 6090 Trans in it, and it's got a stock truck converter in it, which is a pretty tight converter. It makes it pretty hard to launch, and it pushes through the brakes pretty easily. So we want to get a little higher stall converter in it. We're excited to see what this thing will do. I hope you guys stay tuned for the next video. Uh, thanks for checking in. As always, please like, subscribe, hit that little notification bell. Uh, we're really trying to grow our followership on YouTube and give you guys a lot more informative videos about both our project vehicles and some tech stuff as well. So please tell your friends and subscribe. Thanks so much.